Okay, so do you have the math skills to be able to solve this problem without the aid of a calculator? Well, hopefully you do, but if you don't, I will help you out and you're going to learn a lot from this particular video, especially if you do this problem wrong, which a lot of you out there are going to do for uh, very common reasons. Okay, now, of course, I'll hold off uh, on telling you exactly what those reasons are because I want to give you a full opportunity for you to solve this problem. Again, without the aid of a calculator, just use that supercomputer in between your ears. That's much better than any artificial intelligence out there. That's actual intelligence. So let's go to take a look at the problem. We have brackets 4 minus 3 squared minus a minus 9, all that divided by 1 minus 3 cubed. All right, so again, if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, and then we will walk through this problem step by step. Now, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's go to take a look at the answer right now. So if you did this correct, you would get this answer right here, negative one half. All right, now if you didn't get this answer, don't despair. Uh, you'll probably see your error. And again, I'm kind of referencing a uh, common error. There's actually a couple of spots in this problem where students can uh, go wrong. If they're gonna make a mistake, it's typically in these particular areas. So, you know, never get discouraged if you get a math problem wrong. It's just an opportunity to learn something. But uh, for those of you that did get this right, let's celebrate with a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that you are an expert, a certified professional in the order of operations which is oftentimes referred to as PEMDAS. Now, if you've never heard of this saying, I will explain this uh, in just one second. So this is one of the key areas that you need to know in order to do this problem. And there's a few other things too that uh, you're going to have to understand in order to do this, but great job. Let's go ahead and get into the problem. All right, so as I indicated, you need to know the order of operations. So in mathematics, things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and powers. These type of things are examples of mathematical operations. Matter of fact, a plus sign is a mathematical operator, okay? Now you can see here, we have all sorts of different operations going on. We have division, we have powers, we have subtraction. This is actually multiplication right in here. So depending on what order we do this problem in, uh, we will get different values. So what is the correct order? Well, we have this lovely little saying right here, uh, or acronym rather, uh, PEMDAS, that tells us the proper order of operation. So let me go ahead and explain very quickly how it works. So this is a checklist, okay? And you're gonna go from left to right. And j just in case uh, if you forget PEMDAS, there's a little mnemonic, it's just a little uh, saying that goes along with this. It is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Now, I don't know what Aunt Sally did, but we thank her for her cool little phrase. All right, so let's go ahead and get into PEMDAS. So again, this is your checklist. When you have a problem like this, and uh, in mathematics, typically we would, uh, we would refer to a problem like this as a numeric expression. Okay, I'll say that again, a numeric expression. These numbers are trying to express something. Matter of fact, they're trying to express one specific value, right? And that's, of course, the answer to the problem. So when you have a numeric expression, all different sorts of operations going on, you need to think PEMDAS. And let's go ahead and go through these letters here. So P stands for parentheses, uh, but it also can be brackets or these kind of little squiggly brackets. Technically, this is grouping symbols. And of course, you can see we have parentheses in this problem. So we'll talk more about, uh, um, you know, when we have parentheses, you know, how do we address this in a problem? Just very briefly, if you have multiple sets of parentheses or brackets or grouping symbols, you always work from the inside out. In other words, if you have parentheses here, brackets here, and more parentheses here, you would go to the innermost parentheses, do that, and then just keep expanding. All right, 
So that is the P. All right, so let's move on to the E. Now, E is uh, exponents. Basically, you just think of it as a power. So if you have 2 to the third power, this little number up here is called the exponent, and the big number is called a base. The entire thing is called a power. So E stands for powers, and of course, we have some in our problem. All right, so how about M, D, A, and S? Let's just go ahead and tell you what these stand for. M is multiplication, D is division, A is addition, S is subtraction. Now, I did indicate that this is a checklist that goes from left to right. So this is a very, very common place where students confuse the order of operations. Now, it would seem logical that you're like, oh, if it's going from left to right, we would always do multiplication, and then we would do division, and then we do addition and subtraction. And that makes sense. However, that's not the way this works. Okay, so if you've been confused about this, no problem. Now is your chance to be unconfused. So M and D are actually groups. So you're going to do multiplication or division, whatever you see first from left to right. So if you see multiplication from left uh, first, from left to right, then do that. Okay, if you see division, then multiplication, you need to do the division first. Okay, so very, very common place where students make uh, errors, and addition and subtraction work the same way. Okay, so that is the order of operations, quick review of it. And uh, if you were confused about this, you know, uh, here's an opportunity for you to do this problem again and see if you can get the correct answer. All right, so let's go ahead and start the problem. Again, you always want to be keeping uh, that PEMDAS checklist in mind. So first things first, and uh, the first thing that I'm going to suggest is the following, okay? Here, we really are dealing with a fraction. We have this big group right here. Okay, this is a grouping symbol. We're thinking PEMDAS, the P. So we're going to have to do all of this stuff, and then we're going to divide it by this group right here, 1 minus 3 cubed. So really, this is like a fraction. Anytime you see division, uh, you know, where there's two groups being divided, something like this, a uh, good way to think of this problem is a fraction. Okay, so let me kind of show you the equivalent of this. So here we have 4 minus 3 squared minus uh, minus 9. This would be our numerator. And then we're dividing it by 1 minus 3 cubed. That would be our denominator, right? So this being divided by this. Now, it's good to kind of see the problem this way because effectively what you can do when you have a numeric expression this way, is effectively think of this as two separate problems. In other words, you're going to focus on the numerator, get one value for that, and then you'll do all this math down here in the denominator. You'll get that answer, and then we'll go ahead and, uh, we'll go ahead and put this fraction together. So anytime you're dealing with big fraction, ex uh, fractional expressions like this, this is a good approach. All right, so now you don't have to do it this way. You could have just worked within these various grouping symbols and then, um, you know, put this together. But stylistically, this is um, how I like to approach problems. So again, I'm going to think of this as two separate problems, and we're going to be having our PEMDAS hat on the entire way to guide us. All right, so let's go to take the next step, and hopefully the next step for you is to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. You have no idea how powerful this little tiny act is in terms of benefiting me. And it really goes a long way. Matter of fact, if you hit that subscribe button right now, that would be my expression. So if you're new to my channel, uh, welcome. Um, and you'll find on my channel, Basic Math to Advanced Math. And right now, I think I have over 2,000 plus videos. And I post math videos every day just because I'm obsessed with teaching mathematics. So if you need help with math, check out my um, all my free stuff on my YouTube channel. Plus, I have uh, great math courses with full instruction that you can check out. You can find links to those in the description of the video. But let's get back to the problem. All right, so uh, again, I'm going to go ahead and view the problem as a fraction. And I'm thinking PEMDAS, right? So P-E-M-D-A-S. So uh, P is parentheses, right? Grouping symbols. So it's pretty clear that we have this big group up here. And then here we have parentheses. So again, like two separate problems. So we have to do what's inside the parentheses. Now, the P is not finished. Okay, the parentheses part or the grouping symbol part of your checklist is not finished until you get this down to one value. All right, so 
knowing that I am looking inside the grouping symbol, I'm kind of scanning and now I'm continuing on with my little checklist, my PEMDAS checklist, and I'm asking myself, are there any powers? And of course there is up here in the numerator. Now I do have a power right here, but I can't do that until I finish what's inside the parentheses. okay? So here we have four minus three squared minus minus nine. So this is what we have to do right here. This is our first step. And this right here is a very, very uh, common place in a problem like this where students are going to make a mistake. Okay, so what do you think the result of this is going to be, right? So we know we have to do powers next, this three squared. Let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. All right, so three squared is a positive nine, okay? And notice down here, I, do, I took the step, one minus three is negative two, so that'd be negative two cubed uh, for the denominator, and you can see that work right there. And here, this three squared, this squared only applies to this positive three. It's not negative three squared like this. So for those of you that have four plus nine, okay, that's not how you interpret this problem, okay? This power is only to this base, which is positive three, okay? So a very common place where students can make an error. So this is the result, okay? So we have three squared, which of course is positive nine, and uh, negative two cubed is going to be our next step for the denominator, right? All right, so thinking about PEMDAS, so I'm still working in this problem and working this problem right here. So negative two cubed is going to be pretty easy. That's just gonna be negative two times itself, three times. Of course, you need to understand the rules for positive and negative numbers to do this problem. But uh, if you don't understand this stuff, they're not, it's not difficult. So don't, um, you know, don't get distressed about anything you don't understand. All this stuff is pretty easy to learn. All right, let's take a look at what's going on up here though in the numerator. And what is our next move, All right? So here we have PEMDAS, let me write that again. Uh, we're still working inside the parentheses. We took care of the power, which was three uh, squared. Now, um, thinking about multiplication and division. So we, do we have any multiplication or division here? Well, yes, we actually do, okay? Now, this part right here is actually multiplication. This negative is really like a negative one being multiplied by this negative nine. Now, a good way to think of this is negative of a negative nine is the opposite of a negative nine, which so right here, this is going to become a positive nine, but this is our next move because technically this is multiplication, okay? So let's go ahead and take that step and we'll also take care of this negative two cubed. All right, so again, a negative of a negative nine or negative one times negative nine is positive nine and negative two cubed is negative eight. And of course, we can write this out. Anytime you um, don't have your calculator, just wanna kinda you know, see or double check that you did something right, like negative two cubed, uh, and of course, this has parentheses, all right? So this is much, much different than uh, negative two cubed like this, although in fact, the answers are still working out the same here, uh, if whether you do the, do the problem this way or this way. So you can just go write it out, negative two times negative two, this is positive times a negative, we're going to get a negative eight, two times two times two is eight, so there you go. All right, so notice that I'm not trying to do, you know, uh, too many steps at once. Now, I am taking a step in the numerator and one step in the, in the denominator because I'm treating these as two separate problems. So let's go ahead and continue our work right now. And it looks like we're pretty good to go in our denominator. So we have to continue to work on the um, uh, numerator up here, right? So I have negative one times negative nine. Of course, that's positive nine. Let me get rid of this parenthesis. We don't need that anymore. Okay, so let's go to continue on. All right, let me get rid of that parenthesis again. So right here, we have four minus nine plus nine. Now, uh, again, you, if you're thinking about PEMDAS, right? So PEM, uh, P -E -M -D -A -S, and then we can square away that D. So right here, you're saying, okay, addition and subtraction, we're gonna do whatever comes first from left to right. So this is subtraction right here. So we could do this, but some of you might be tempted to be like, man, negative nine plus nine, this is gonna be a zero. Well, you could think of the problem that way as well, okay? So we could write uh, our problem as four minus nine or four plus negative nine. Uh, one, that's one way to kind of think of what's going on. And so now this is all addition. So now we have negative nine 
plus 9, which of course is 0. So this leaves us with a 4 up at the numerator. We still have a negative 8 down here in the denominator. So we have a lovely fraction here, 4 over negative 8. And you never want to leave your answer this way. Okay, You always want to reduce any fractions. And of course, the fraction 4 eighths can be reduced to the fraction 1 half. And this is negative. Now notice here, the negative sign is with this uh, 8 down here in the denominator. This is a very confused uh, thing with a lot of students. So 4, actually let's use 1 half. If I have 1 over negative 2, that's the same thing as negative 1 half, and that's the same thing as negative 1 over a positive 2, because a negative divided by a positive, or a positive divided by a negative, is negative, right? The sign of the answer is negative. So you want to um, be very specific about where you put that sign. Okay, so here I'm going to put it out in front, so negative 1 half. But if you had a negative uh, 2 down here, in other words, if you, um, you know, if you had a problem like this and you wrote any version of this answer, I would give you full credit. But I just want you to understand that technically the value of this fraction is a negative, and there you go. Okay, so again, you know, more, um, you know, uh, you know, more of an illustration here, or what? A, no, that's kind of really bad, <laughs> really bad English. Please don't subscribe to my English uh, channel. I don't do well in terms of, uh, you know, um, uh, my skills are in mathematics. Let's just say that, right? So you got to find your strengths, and if your strengths not in math, let me say this, right? Just like mine is not in uh, writing or English, but what did I do? And I actually got master's degree, master's degrees in you know, things where I had to write a lot, I had to work a little bit extra harder and study hard and just, you know, I didn't quit and I kind of took my potential as far as I possibly could. All right, so not everyone's going to love math. I get that, but don't get discouraged. In other words, if you're like struggle, struggling with mathematics, you know, don't, you know, get down on yourself and say, well, I can't learn this stuff. You absolutely can. Uh, you certainly may have to work a little bit harder than the next person, but you can get this stuff, right? So, you have to start with great instruction, and that's what I try to deliver, clear and understandable math instruction. But if you truly want to learn math, you have to practice, okay? That's the only way you're, you're going to develop the math skills to be successful on exams and tests, etc., etc. Okay, so if you need assistance with uh, the order of operations or this level of math, I'm going to recommend two uh, courses of mine. The first is uh, my Math Foundations course. Uh, you can find a link to that in the description of this video or uh, my pre-algebra. Matter of fact, uh, my algebra course is a good candidate for uh, uh, this kind of level of math. But again, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.